Pranish, thanks uh, Vatikuti team and thanks to you guys for hanging around. Usually, the Kolarekla is the last session and you know, it's me, Avanish, Chagdish and so much speaking to each other, but we have more people today, which is great. Uh, so, when they said current status of robotic Kolarekla, I was thinking, thinking, thinking so much that I did the presentation like an hour ago because I was trying to put in what is relevant. If you actually look at it, it's not the technique or, you know, whether it's lab better or robotic better or what. If, if, it's, if you're going to use robotics, you've got to discuss the cost and the efficiency. And I, I think it boils down to that because the technique has been standardized uh, as far as colorectal, mostly for, you know, rectal cancer. But again, uh, you know, the uses for robotics is, is uh, you know, is gaining momentum and, you know, lots of... And more and more procedures are being done, both cancer and non-cancer. So, let's see what's happening in robotic, uh, sorry, in colorectal surgery. Oh, okay. So, current use, you see, most of it is going to be in rectal cancer TME. And Avanish, this case, it's going to be plus beyond TME, which he does, I don't. Uh, colectomies, rectal prolapse, transanal excision, you know, sort of robotic TAMIS, few cases have been reported. But most of the data exists for rectal cancer, some for colectomies and some for, you know, uh, in uh, rectopexy and uh, TAMIS procedures. So this is what, I think this is the sum, you know, this is the slide which we all want to know. What is happening in India for, uh, in, in robotic uh, colorectal surgery? If you see, there has been a steady increase, but in 16, there were 296 procedures, yeah. and in 2017 there were 550. There's a good jump, but after that it's about a hundred more procedures a year. You know, it's, there is a steady increase, but not, you know, uh, it's not quadrupling. You know, there are many challenges to this, uh, or reasons to it, and we need to look into those things. So uh, that's a uh, that's a that's that data I got this morning from the intuitive people. So uh, of course there's some more uh, rectopexies and you know. Uh, uh, other procedures which are happening, but uh, you know, the main, the chunk of the work is in the robotic, uh, sorry, colorectal cancer work, and that's what's happening. But you know, uh, I think uh, you know, with more, uh, so let's look at rectal cancer surgery because that's where the robot is primarily used, and we look at what evidence is available and what we've done in India and who's doing what. So, which technique for uh, rectal cancer surgery? We know open is standard, and you know. And I think every surgeon uh, who has to be trained very well uh, in, a, in open, and then you proceed to lab, transanal TME or robotic, will look at what evidence is available. Uh, so, for the last decade or so, uh, lab, uh, uh, you know, rectal cancer surgery has been standardized. And, sorry. So, we know, you know, lab, uh, lab uh, rectal cancer, like rectal cancer surgery, is the standard of care as it stands. But there are challenges with the lab TME. One, an obese people, male narrow pelvis, uh, bulky tumors, post chemo rad, and again the conversion rates are higher in difficult cases uh, compared to uh, 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 the robotic data which is coming out. So there's been several studies which have shown, uh, you know, uh, the turn of the century which showed that the lap is very good but more recently there are two studies which came out uh, uh, sort of muddied the waters the alacart and uh, akasok trials which did not show any in failed to show non inferiority and that's where some of the problem lies now with laparoscopy compared to uh, 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 open surgery so then a new technique called transanal tme was introduced it's been uh, you know uh, they were celebrating 10 years of transanal tme a uh, couple of days ago uh, by the experts Pat Silla, uh, Antonio Lacey, Royal Hompes. So the funny bit is, I'll try to look at some of the papers, there's no animation books, there's a lot of papers comparing with apostrophe and uh, colorectal cancer. Yeah. Uh, so I'll look at some of the papers and see what they say. Yeah. 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 The target score cost about 70,000 now, right? And then the instrument is sold, and then we need another team, the top end. Then there's a cost to it. So, 
I'm not sure that I'm not sure they've taken it the right way, but I think they realizing I think the peer group is realizing that there's a push it through with lots of meetings, a lot of trainings went on without real data or comparing techniques or the cost data. And again, you guys might have heard about the Norway moratorium. Did you guys hear about it? Yes. So there was an audit which showed that uh, uh, in the 2016, 17, I think, uh, 17, and two years ago, 110 cases, all of it, 9.5% of the cases record. Okay, and the records were strange compared to the normal records we get, uh, being multi centric in the service, which is very unusual. So they were trying to figure out what, what is the reason why is it poor techniques, you know, building the, uh, you know, the uh, first thing properly, is there too much of leaking or you are interfering with the AFC high pressure, where there too much of getting embedded with the cellular sidewalk, so that's where that comes from. So they said, you know, it is stopped doing uh, under the team until the national audit is done and they find out the reasons or the, the guys who are doing it all trained in England and in Barcelona and, and were good actors and you know so it's still not clear. Although we speak to Royal Home Press and uh and the LAP, they they would say that it's probably related to uh, uh, training techniques uh, and so there is more focus And 
and basically it showed that you know the randomized control trials are very good. Uh, you know, uh, about the convention laparoscopy and uh, uh, surgery and the risk of conversion with the laparoscopy. So it did not show any significant reduction in conversion rates and no other advantages. The problem was the trial design. So basically it said people should run 3, 30 million years of procedures. Minimum of 10 lakh or 10 robotic. I mean, 10 lakh, 10 robotic. I know how it's been done. I've done 10 lakh or 10 robotic. So I think that's the problem. Because if this trial is done now, you know, a boy like one of you, know, like Dr. Sunshine, for example, who does both of them, he does them, I'm sure this is a good thing. Or a bunch. Or even doing like one of them. So I think that's a problem with this trial. So again, a lot of the arguments against robotics for Surgery or anti cancer surgery comes from this trial. So I think it's time to do another trial, but I don't know how easy or how easy this going to be. So, looking at urinary and sexual function, there are several studies which show that, uh, I'm going to run through the other slides, but we have to improve its better with robotics. And there is a recently published study saying that if you have a low volume robotic service, the outcome is going to be poor. I think that goes for you know, any uh, uh, surgeon technique. You know, if you are doing very few cases, rarely the outcomes on um, you know, the So there is a good paper from uh, Rashidi which showed that if you are a high volume surgeon doing robotics or correct surgery, uh, your, uh, your hospital stay is lesser, the mean operating time will be more, uh, your, uh, your uh, Conversion rate is almost you know one fourth of uh, what's compared to that possibly. But if you look at the whole overall cost, they match up. So basically the high volume surgery or more than that cost to more or less be the same. That's what So in summarize it, basically you're going to get good robotics, uh colorectal cancer surgery, short length of stay, low conversion rates, uh equal number of outcomes, better sexual and functional outcomes. Uh, increased operative time, uh, but I think that will improve the experience and increased cost. But again, these are all case studies, this is only one RCT that we discussed. Most of these studies have used the SI or the S model. Uh, the SI is more suited for colorectal surgery, because it's multi quarter surgery. And I think with increased volume and experience, it will reduce operative time and increased cost. So, it looks like cost and operative time are the only major barriers for us to avoid. So how do we address these issues? I think volumes and subspecialization is one way of doing it. Uh, I think if you do that, your volume will increase, your efficiency will increase as your procedure time will come down. And your team needs to be well trained for that. So a few slides basically saying that you know, summary of uh, you know outcomes of like certain volume treatment and cancer. The more volume you do, the outcomes are going better. You can see all the mobility, post up and all comes down to sub specialized and doing high volume fatty cancer surgery. And again, if you follow it to train, you're, you're more likely to perform a respective procedure. That's what this slide shows uh, compared to a abdominal perineal section. Again, if you follow it to train and more resection that in this study more than 21, less than 21, you you are your risk your local recurrence and disease specific survival is better if you're colorectal and high volume compared to the non colorectal and low volume. So this cochlear interval again confirms the same and so if you subspecialize or sorry like a copy of this so basically you need to procedure specific volumes that will more you know your skill set will improve in that particular procedure and you will see that outcome in your course. And deep training is so very important that we will be discussing this morning a very, make a very good talks which was starting on why it's important to train to have a two team approach. Uh, I think the surgical team, as of all, is really a two team. I think they, we need to train them on so certain and very specific bedside team who are super efficient so that you can cut down on time, you become more, uh, and so the consulting is, uh, is the main surgeon, is maybe the doctor too, 
and I'm talking about the robotics section, the bedside team, have main assistant, uh, trainings could be part of that, uh, scrub nurse, this team is responsible for patient positioning, co placement, and practice safety, special anesthesia, scratch and anesthesia. There are significant benefits of splitting the roles, you can, you know, you can use the chain of roles, but it's a very important thing to go to these teams specifically, as Dr. Garan was, uh, was saying this morning, you know, he doesn't go talk to another person without the bedside. And for our team, our swear here, he is amazing. Because after some time, when, you know, when my arm gets, you know, you know, I'm struggling, he just spots it very early on, takes up, okay, and moving down. And I think it's very important. And, it's, and I feel that I need to go and, you know, see what he's doing because he, you can't just do the section, go away, and then when you went to drop it, you get stuck. Like, so I think it's very important to keep changing your roles backwards and forwards to where team becomes super efficient. And uh, so what uh, we do is we try to post these cases first in the morning. We start early in private hospitals so it's a different game. So we try to get it to the five thirty six so that we don't get delayed by two years. By six six thirty we meet the nice stop and, and by nine nine thirty. We're done and we're ready for the So that way it keeps, you know, case, you know, you know exactly what I'm going to do now. You know, we don't get frustrated following on with somebody else. And we've done, we've done away with using, because a lot of people use a lap uh, stack to do the initial laparoscopy and, you know, put the boards in different sections. I think, you know, uh, you can do all that, you know, you use the body camera, the real reason to take it down, you know, very big over what you need to do. You look for any, you know, predator disease or, and I said the challenging spot of the scans. So we do all that without the lab stuff because again that reduces the cost. I know in 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 in, uh, in, in a nationalized institute, you know, center or uh, you know, cost may not be that important, but it is important because somebody's paying for it. And I think if you all get efficient and try to think about cost, 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 I think it will really make a big difference with all that So you know, always think what you can avoid. You know. So don't break the robot until you show sure you're going to see because again it's only 4,000 right now, but it is 4,000 right now, it's only space, it's our harmony in the end. So, uh, so then standard procedure, you know, you may, you may want to sort of, uh, you know, have a day off with the, say you're going to adopt the procedure, split it down, how you're going to do it, or, you know, go visit a center which does lots of it, how you get proctored. Um, but I think it's important that the entire team is familiar with the steps and you try to repeat it. And you, you sort of become a kind of factor, and I think that's where you see improving outcomes, cost effective funding. So, uh, again, so to improve efficiency, what we do is come on that cost is faster than what we do. Uh, so, we only use two instruments, or two arms. We don't use the third arm. Uh, good thing is camera and our control, which I think is the biggest difference between laparoscopy. Wrist uh, instrument for vessels, building the section, you can go right to the Bipolar grasp on the left hand, and more for the right hand, that's what I know. Uh, and you, you use traditional lap bar glass first to retract bar and you don't need to use an instrument with the uh, uh, you know. Uh, and I use a half end gauze to zap, you don't use suction. Because every time you suck, you suck some gas off and collapse it and the uh, Operate between using the air seat system that I strongly recommend because it gives you a fantastic uh, uh, feel. Uh, you know, there's no smoke and it doesn't pop as much. So please, I would recommend. So again, for uh, you know, uh, we use standard lap end locks for the vessels, uh, and we don't use energy wise. The more and more you do, uh, I remember I was, you know, when I started out with lapos, we used to use uh, you know harmonic and you know, whatnot. You know, it's a lot of uh, charring and you know fluid, uh, and I think at some point I visited under uh, Parvez and folks for that. And he was using a lot of hook uh, or monopolar. Uh, the section and I found that extremely useful and now we sort of convert it into really large copy data and we use the same and I think that's fantastic as well as in the plane. You could even in very difficult to push people at 30 fingers to work, uh, to work uh, to be fine. And I just said uh, I see that it makes a big difference. So I'm just going to share some experience about what we did. So people who were aware of starting because I left England and came back about 10 years ago and uh, joined the course seven years ago. The surgical oncology general uh, surgery surgical oncology surgical gastroenterology. So we said it was to correct it. So we started from scratch. So we, we started a program right from scratch, build it, 
now. So we are eight year now. Formally launched the unit about four years ago, uh, you know, publicly. But it was set up in 2013, so we set up a new only corrective, uh, organ specific approach, uh, both in animal and human. So last year we did about 70 procedures now. So the reason I'm saying this is, this is very important because it just don't jump into the body and say, okay, we're going to do an amazing job. It doesn't just come like that. There is a backstory to it, you need volumes, you need to have, you know, enough cases to do well, you know, get better at it. So we also said we'll, we'll have an MBT and other department of service, so that all our things are discussed in it. So we started with lab program initially in 2013. I didn't dabble in lab uh, robotics. Uh, at that point, uh, that's when I first met uh, uh, Jambishwar. Uh, so I found it, uh, you know, just starting a program right from scratch, so I didn't want to jump into new technology. You know, it's a private hospital, you want to mess it up, you're done. So, so we started the lab course, but I don't really take 10 hours, I usually take like 6 in the evening, all I do. You know. I mean, we have a joke at the hospital, I promise you. Big joke. But then, that's how we start off, when you, when you, when you, you know, find you build something. So, between 2 and 30 and 50, we did 70 lab already. Uh, section on that. And I think at that point I sort of standardized that uh, technique of you know taking the steps down the that is kind of went to see on the way. So so we broke this uh, standardized the technique and uh, 2015 uh, I went for the certification uh, in Atlanta and that's when uh, Henry Gordon from the company came and showed us his technique in robotics and uh, that was good so we were talking by by the TV clinic guys. Uh, then finally we started with MBT. I think uh, you know it's all this is new in a private hospital because you can't be operated before you know what it happens uh, actually. But it was important because you need to know what you're doing. You need to show your peers uh, or your thought leaders, all of them, to be that you know, you're doing the right thing and you know your 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 uh, and, and plus when you're adopting new techniques like you will be a hospital or a you know. You need to show them to convince them because they are your, you know, uh, peer group. They will spread the word in the hospital as well as the patients that you know this work is being done and you know the, the, the results the outcomes are pretty good. So it is very important to. Uh, and I'm sure all of you will have an MBT in your hospitals. If not, you know, please push for it. And you know, it's so important to get that going. And, uh, so we. We've been 2013 to 18, we've done about 380 to progress the cancer sections. Okay. Numbers are slowly increasing. Uh, we've done about uh, 335 robotic procedures. Uh, uh, again, that's slowly increased, uh, increasing year by year. Uh, so, rectal cancer is a bulk of the work. We've done about 215 sections to date. Colon cancer, I, I, don't, I wasn't doing much of the report, there's no big difference, but again, as, as the experience built up, I felt that it would do a better. Mobilization, we see the you know, uh, lymph node harvest is better, and, uh, uh, and so we, we, we do robotics for everything now. And I think it's important to standardize the technique. Whichever operation you need to standardize it, and particularly for rectal for rectal section, for example, you standardize it and do the same thing again and again and again. And I think you know, it becomes automatic. So I also try to look at some of the, you know, uh, so one. So that's the way this is a, a, a procedure time and a console time and it's, you know, I don't know, see very clearly. It's sort of, so that's last four years data. So it sort of standardized very quickly and it, it's not getting any better. Maybe slightly better this year, but you know, what it means is, I think the lab, for me personally, in mean, our program, the laparoscopy experience is very useful to really standardizing. And by the end of that, we were doing it in about four hours or something. So, Adoption of technology, so basically you know how to do open well, you know how to lap, you know, handle your instruments, you know this argument about you know, you can jump straight from open to uh, robotics directly. But you still have to manage your instruments and you know you could easily burn something. You need to know how the three dimensional field is. So I personally think uh, you know in having the lap of spectrum does help. We'll ask the experts in a minute. Uh, so so we looked at some of the data. Uh, so uh, uh, for this year the procedure time is 261 minutes and console time 138 as the average where conversion, which, which goes with all the literature, but conversion is very less. And yeah, our average level today is about five days, but it could be lesser because 
probably most of the stuff is not done, so it's tend to stay a bit long. But important thing is with all the efficiency steps we've taken, the cost has come down. Even by our cost, an average cost of about four lakhs, I think, is you know, the general award. I think it's achieved. Uh, the total mayor the most expensive. So we look at some of the peer group data and I think the cancer outcomes wise it's you know it's pretty good. Uh, uh, what I found was in, in my rectal cancer case, the first 75 cases and second 75 cases, the time was more or less stable but slightly better. And importantly, uh, you know the cost is coming down, you know, that, that comes with experience and you know, all the efficiency measures we take. So basically if you you have the training and you subspecialize in the and volumes and you refine your technique and you refine it further, you reduce your operating design and the cost and all this will be better patient outcomes. So I will further take a look that is new, lots of new machines are coming, I think it is great for us. Um, you know, uh, this, I think it is an exciting time to be in the audience, I think, particularly for the rectal, I think. And all these things will you know, help us make this uh, you know, the technology cheaper uh, you know, and also uh, one other thing which I didn't touch on how what is the effect of the body on the surgeon. You know? I'll, I'll show you a video where uh, uh, later you know, used to stand right the left side you mobilize one on the other side. You know, so much strain on your shoulders and you know your legs and your uh, back and we you know the other last week we had three cases on a drop. You feel a bit tired but the body is you know, so much more comfortable you just sat comfortably. So I haven't highlighted those papers but I think that's something. So I think the things which we need to prepare are finding ways of research into cost cutting, improving efficiency, the effect of robotics on surgeon. And I think how cancer outcomes is done. You know, we know it's going to give us good outcomes. I don't think it's a problem. But again, Juan is going to show videos on beyond KB where you know, can do, can do things which are you know, very challenging for the process. So again, how do you Build a case, you can be a multi specialty robotic program. So, all specialties use it. Uh, in our hospital, for it's primarily urology and uh, GI. Uh, and we do about 550 procedures a year, so the robot is you know, it's two or three procedures a day, so it's, it's well used. But I think EMT is slowly building up. Thoracic, cardiac. So, there's a lot of, if it's multi use, then the cost of you know, maintenance cost comes down, of poor patient. Usage cost comes down. So, uh, so summary, to summarize, volume products is here to stay. I think with you subspecialize, you build on volume, and that's the issue. Uh, in a big center like uh, 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 Soma Shaker's Barry, he's been doing it for a long time, and, and you know, there are lots of volumes in all subs. It's a different, I don't think you can replicate the same model everywhere. So, uh, you know, so I think a few, maybe five, ten years time, there will be more organ specific surgeons. Uh, and I think that's a good thing because you will, uh, you will have more volume in your area and that will give you your skill set. Team training is crucial. Standardize the procedure. Use the robot and instruments for what it's, you know, it does best. And if you want to use a third arm, for example, use it where it's very challenging that melanastomosis, you know, uh, has been mentioned. But start with simple procedures and as explained in cases, progress to complex cases. Uh, avoid luxuries, you know, if you don't want to use a wide clip or a body stable at this point in time, you can use a lot because simple, but it's all very important <coughs> and maximize the necessities. And you know, you can always find a way to make it work. The simplest uh, way to stop the body to say it's expensive, it's not. You just need to rework how to do it, uh, you know, and, and I think uh, you will find it.